All right, now I'm going to take advantage of your hospitality and I'm going to give you a softball talk. So my name's Thomas Hatch. I'm the CTO of SaltStack. And so, so I'm giving a keynote tomorrow. I usually have to give um, a lot of very technical talks and very uh, in-depth and visionary talks. And I never get to give a talk for fun. <laughs> And so I, I presented, or sorry, I submitted a softball talk, and probably just because you're being nice to me, you let me, you let me get up here and talk about it. Basically what I wanna go through is how I introduce modern Sousa to people. Because I have some strange looks, I will admit, when people ask me what Linux distribution I'm running, and I go, well, SUSE, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so let me kind of just talk through some of these things. And I noticed that there are other talks that uh, use a Dr. Strangelove reference in the title. If, if you haven't seen the movie Dr. Strangelove, it is absolutely hilarious. Okay. So it all started with a guy named Bo. So I get this email from Bo almost two years ago, and he says to me, Sousa is going to start using the ever-loving crap out of salt. <laughs> and my response was, so? You're Sousa, I don't care. That's honestly what I thought. And so a little later, Honestly, only a few weeks later, uh, what I ran into was that we needed to reinstall the base operating systems on one of our test environments um, in our uh, QA lab. And I thought, well, I have to at least look at SUSE, and I have been deeply offended by a certain other enterprise Linux distribution lately. And so I, I started to look at SUSE. Oh, I have a picture of Bo. If any, of you, if any of you don't know Bo, this is, this is what he looks like. <laughs> okay. That's actually how I honestly describe him to people. Big nose. <laughs> All right. So I had to put a couple of my old Sousa biases aside. And a lot of this came from... Honestly, one of my biggest old Sousa biases is that I felt like you did set up the Apache configs in a weird way. That bothered me. <laughs> um, I've, I've gotten over that. <laughs> and so this is also, this is the main thing that I run into when, when I start talking to people about Sousa. Again, I'm from the United States where, you know, things are kind of crazy over there right now. <laughs> and... And so I'll admit, SUSE is not a very popular distribution in the US. And so I usually get this kind of kickback, ironically, even though I'm in Utah, and uh, you, know, you guys have some ties over there, for better or for worse. Okay. And I will have to admit on the third point, uh, I kind of like Yast now. I'm almost embarrassed to say it. It's, it's really convenient. <laughs> okay. So the, the main thing that started to change my mind was how SUSE, OpenSUSE changed their approach to releases. Um, again, right after Bo sent me this email, I go to the OpenSUSE website and go, okay, I'm going to take a look at OpenSUSE. And uh, I was unaware of the whole leap tumbleweed thing that was going on. And the big problem that I generally had was, I'm an old Arch Linux guy. I love Arch Linux. I used to be an Arch Linux packager, et cetera, et cetera. But in the data center, I would always use CentOS. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use anything other than CentOS or anything related to CentOS, just CentOS. <laughs> And I found it frustrating that I lived in this two-distribution world 
where I felt that I needed a completely different distribution for my laptop than I needed for my servers, whether they were in the data center or at my house. And upon learning about Leap, I got really excited about this because all of a sudden I can use a rolling distro because six month distribution releases are silly and dumb. So hooray, I can use a rolling release. Uh, but also, I've got a completely free operating system which is more than sufficiently stable to run uh, the, my, the vast majority of my server needs. And so I like to compare this to using uh, multiple programming languages. We already had a little trolling from Joe earlier if you were in this room about using multiple programming languages and how that's morally wrong. Um, and I, I agree with other commenters that uh, the solution is not more Perl, it's, le or it's less Perl. I'm not a big Perl fan, or Java, sorry. But then again, I would endorse the use of Julia. If anyone's used Julia, it's brilliant. I'm not serious. But in programming, often we do have to say we're going to use something like Python for high level, get a lot of stuff done, prototyping, and then have C so that we can optimize performance where we need to. And I didn't like having the same, the same problem inside of my operating systems. And that's a really strong selling point for people to be able to explain how well tested Tumbleweed is. Tumbleweed is beautiful. Is Richard Brown in here? Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, tumbleweed is beautiful. All right. And so I, I began to feel that this idea, this concept of a rolling release plus an enterprise release and the, the overall way that SUSE develops software, develops the operating system and pushes it out was far and away the optimal mechanism. And again, I felt that uh, this six-month release cycle concept is, is, well, I think it's a waste of a lot of people's time. Okay? And then the benefit I felt is that the enterprise software existed in the right place. That it was the right type of upsell and the right type of ramp to get somebody moving from certain environments on a rolling release, certain environments on Leap, certain environments on SLES. And I felt that was a lot smoother. Now, I don't remember who wrote this blog post, but someone from SUSE wrote a blog post about how SUSE makes decisions and then commits to them. Was that you, Joe? Uh, I, I really didn't mean to compliment Joe. <laughs> Actually, it was a really good blog post. <laughs> And, and this is something that really struck me because uh, coming from a certain other distributions whose names may or may not appear on this slide, I'd become very frustrated with things kind of flopping around. You know, should I be using Zen? Should I be using KVM? Um, is ButterFS still going to work in uh, 6.9, et cetera, et cetera? And I began to really appreciate SUSE and the fact that they still put up with RiserFS, for instance. Good job, guys. You know, I think RiserFS was very brilliant for its time. Obviously not quite brilliant enough. Now, <laughs> all right. So the next major problem that we run into that, that I feel is very important from the perspective, particularly deploying inside of a data center, has to do with the ability to backport software packages. So let me go back to the story where we're at SaltStack, we're, de we're determining what distribution to use um, underneath a new cloud deployment. And it was a pretty small cloud. And so we go, well, we'll just use Open Nebula, get this thing up and going pretty quick. Doesn't need to be complicated or fancy. And we start to install Open Nebula on SUSE. And I told one of my, one of my engineers, okay, we're gonna try SUSE, and it was Tuesday, and I said, if, if it comes to Friday and you're frustrated and mad, we can, we can back out. Because no one in the company had ever used SUSE, 
at this point. This, this engineer is named CR, wonderful, wonderful man. He uh, comes back to me on Thursday, and I'm fully expecting him to say, yeah, Tom, nuts of this Sousa garbage. And he comes and, and he walks into my office and he starts talking to me about something completely different, right? And I and I ask him, hold on, hold on, hold on. What about what about the servo deployment? I mean, weren't weren't you doing this? Why are you asking me about code? And he says, Oh no, I'm done. <laughs> what? So everything's okay? Oh yeah, everything's fine. I'm like, so did you use Sousa? <laughs> He says, yeah, yeah, I, and he, it, was, it was really interesting because at that point, again, it had been two days, he's in my office and he says, not only have I reinstalled all the servers, but I mean, there's no more Ubuntu on my laptop. I'm running Tumbleweed. I have been converted. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that did it for him was OBS. And he stayed for Snapper, but more on that later. But the thing that did it for him was OBS. Because he started to deploy Open Nebula, and the Open Nebula packages he could find for OpenSUSE were horribly out of date. And this is this is a showstopper a lot of the time. That it becomes very very difficult to say ah nuts, you know I really wanted to use this particular piece of software, but just because the vendor doesn't happen to be all over it, I'm going to have to go through the trouble of building my own packages. But you guys have OBS. Thank you. I don't have to build a local package build environment that shroots stuff. Thank you. And so he's in my office and he says, oh, I just tweaked a couple of existing RPMs, put them on OBS, and we were done. They built in a few minutes and we were able to deploy our cloud. So... Thank you for OBS. Thank you for being brilliant and building that. I'm not actually going to badmouth anything else from the stage apart from a certain, uh, a certain other build system fills me with rage. OK. <laughs> Finally, talking a little bit more about tumbleweed. There's an old joke in the Arch, Arch Linux community. Has anyone in here ever run Arch Linux before? Okay. Okay, I'm going to assume the number's actually higher and that most of you are just afraid to admit it in this room. <laughs> so the old joke in the Arch community is something's broken, so I'll just update in a few days and that'll go away. Sure, something else will be broken, but at least this problem will go away. It, 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 the Arch isn't only a rolling release, and don't get me wrong, I still adore Arch. Um, Arch isn't only a rolling release, but it's, it's kind of like a wheel that every time it turns, it's flat in a different place. <laughs> and I was astonished by how thoroughly Tumbleweed gets tested. And as, a, as an Arch packager, I was very aware of the, the amount of effort that certain Arch packagers put into their packages wasn't always quite to the same level as the Tumbleweed project, to put it as kindly as I possibly can. Sometimes it was rather reckless. One of the, one of the main reasons I love packaging salt on Arch Linux is because if there's ever an upstream issue with a dependency in any plausible or conceivable way, we will find out about it in Arch very quickly. All right. So the ridiculously thorough amount of testing is something that I'm very, very grateful for. So in, in the old days, when you would install a Unix-style operating system, um, and if, if you install FreeBSD, who, who here has installed FreeBSD in the last year? Whew, very nice. 
Um, I haven't installed in the last year, so so I'm running on like two years ago on this reference. But so I apologize if I'm wrong. Don't don't get after me. Okay. So if you install FreeBSD, you can still install it with slices or partitioning it in the classical Unix way, right? You've got your var subdirectories isolated, et cetera, et cetera, so that if something logs like crazy, everything's fine, right? One of the things that blew me away just installing SUSE was how meticulously well the ButterFS deployments are laid out. That they are very carefully thought through, that they are by default matched with the packaging and deployment and configuration options, and how they line up the right copy on right style, et cetera, et cetera. All of the right flags are there for all of the right ButterFS um, components. And I was just very impressed by that. And then the next thing that I found astonishing, this engineer CR I told you about came up to me um, a couple of months after we deployed these systems and asked me if I had ever used Snapper. At that point, I hadn't heard of Snapper yet. After, after I was introduced to Snapper, I actually sent, I think I sent Bo an email saying, so I've learned about Snapper and OpenQA and OBS. What other magical SUSE things am I missing? And he introduced me to quite a few more. Like OSC. I, I love the OSC command line, by the way. I don't, I don't really know that those guys would ever need to rewrite that. Sorry, for those of you who weren't here, that's what the last talk was about. Okay. <laughs> I became instantly infatuated with Snapper. <laughs> I mean, this, this thing is cool. <laughs> um, to the extent that I started purposefully doing all sorts of crazy things to break my laptop because all of a sudden I felt far more liberated than I had ever been before. And then thoroughly enjoyed just booting into an old snapshot. <clears throat> it, was, it was excellent. And all my problems went away. I could install all of those third-party repositories. You know, the ones that you install but you don't tell anybody about, especially Richard Brown, because he gets all upset. <laughs> He's still not here, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, and then the ability to just boot into the past so seamlessly. And so similarly, um, I was thoroughly impressed by the fact that Snapper ran automatically, right, whenever you ran Zipper or Yast, um, uh, that, uh, that I built Snapper support directly into Salt's configuration management runtime so that every time you're in Salt, it, you can snapshot back. And it's the first time, and, it's, and, and still when we get customers who come to us and they say, well, we want, we want full rollback. And, and we explain to them that that's a myth, unless you install SUSE. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I already mentioned this because, because Joe brought it up in his excellent blog post. But SUSE sticks it out, and they seem to have very good judgment because they chose SALT. I'm not biased. Okay. But yeah, I did, I, I did mention this before, but SUSE sticks it out. Um, my dad, back in oh, the late 70s, uh, spent a few years living in Germany. And so he would tell us stories growing up about the Germans and how they are different and fantastic in very specific ways. And one of the things that he would say is that Germans will take a long time to make a decision because they want to make the right decision because they don't want to back, have to back out of that decision. Now, I don't, I don't know how true that is. I'm generally under the impression that's true, interfacing with you lot. You seem to take careful, wise decisions and then stick with them. 
But again, this is, this is something I've deeply grown to appreciate in the way Sousa is engineered and also in the commitments that Sousa makes uh, to its customers and its users. I feel much safer over the long run with Sousa than I do with other operating systems. Because, uh, I mean, I know that, you know, you guys are gonna make mistakes, that happens. And I'm very forgiving of those mistakes. But having that long-term confidence is something that I really like. The fact that I feel very comfortable that if Sousa says you should use software X, that they're not gonna back out and change that decision on me really soon. Um, yeah, and thank you for not using Upstart. I, I deeply appreciate that. Have you ever tried to automate Upstart? Oh. Okay, so in a nutshell, this is my pitch when people say, what distro are you using? And I say, Sousa, duh. And they give me that funny look like I'm a madman. And they want me to like use some things. It, it blows my mind because, because they say, what, what Linux is your vision are you using? And I say, I'm using Sousa, of course. And they give me this look like, seriously, like I'm crazy. And then I ask them, what, what Linux distri distribution are you using? And they're like, Linux from scratch. And it's, well, who's the crazy guy? <laughs> or they say something like, uh, we, we deploy production servers on Fedora. No. I actually worked for a company th that, that did that. And uh, I, oh, it worked out great <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it was the government, the U.S. government. <laughs> they were br they were brilliant. <laughs> Actually, it was uh, part of the U.S. intelligence community. Um, ironically, uh, the side you don't hear about because they do their job right. Okay. <laughs> so. SUSE has the best release policies and release cycles. I'm not, I, I feel like I can back that up with more than just opinion and hyper, hyperbole. The world of open source is a rolling world. Not having a rolling release that is stabilized means that your users must always be behind the curve. And Tumbleweed solves it in a way which is infinitely more elegant than any other rolling release. Having an open source release which is stable enough to run in a server environment, I believe is an extremely important aspect of a Linux distribution. And deploying that piece of software in such a way that enables users to get to know SUSE and get to know what an enterprise and an extremely stable SUSE environment feels like is a smart business model to help drive revenues. And that's another thing that impressed me about SUSE is that unlike all but one other Linux distribution, you guys are profitable and growing. And I've become increasingly wary of trusting open source software which seems to be on a, on a revenue dead end. And a lot of it is, a lot of it is. Certain pieces of software which have an extremely high amount of hype and have raised hundreds of millions of dollars make no money still. And it's terrifying. And it's making it hard to raise money. Ugh. <laughs> it's getting easier now for, for us because we make money. It helps. <laughs> okay. So, OBS is brilliant. And again, that's a huge part of that pitch, is to emphasize that, so when I introduce Linux operating systems to somebody, I say, look, the most important part of a Linux operating system is its packages and its package manager. That is the core of the operating system. And how well those packages and its package manager are managed is a direct reflection on the quality of the distribution and the quality of the release. And you guys are doing that right. It is not a cumbersome mess 
unless unless well Joe was explaining that it it's got pearl in the background, but whatever. Um, I can overlook this <laughs> Be, because I endorsed Julia earlier. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Open QA is amazing. Your packages are brilliant. Your release policies don't suck. You solve the two distribution problem. Um, you guys stick to your guns. And it took me a long time to admit that Pac-Man was no longer the world's best package manager. I think it's Zipper now. So, in a nutshell, thank you <laughs> for making <laughs> Such a fantastic Linux distribution. <laughs> um, and for making my life using Linux easier. And uh, Richard Brown is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> All right, any questions, comments, arguments, rebuttals? If anyone honestly wants to argue with me, then that would be great, since I just told you all you're the best. Yes? What feature requests do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what, as much as you love what OpenSUSE is doing and, and what the SUSE guys are doing, helping out, etc., what what's the itch that you would love scratched? I, I, in all honesty, I, I'm not sure. Mostly because you take such darn good care of my software that I write. <laughs> um, we could probably see a few more IDEs packaged. But I use KDevelop, so I know my credibility just went down. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's German, right? <laughs> okay, any others? Yes. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks for this brilliant talk. Um, I'm sorry I have to rain on your parade. I, I can agree to many points, and maybe it's just because I'm still on my journey and only halfway there. I have a Red Hat Fedora background as well. So I joined SUSE last year. You are already one year ahead of me, basically. You have two years of SUSE experience, right? Or? Uh, about one. Okay. okay. I, I will admit, when I introduce SUSE to people... I do introduce it to them and say something along the lines of, Sousa's brilliant, as of about two years ago. <laughs> okay, so um, the only thing that I cannot agree on is build systems, because basically all build systems suck. There's just <laughs> some build systems that suck less than others. Uh, and my question is, what sucks so hard about, about Koji? So in the defense of Koji, I haven't used it extensively for a few years. Mostly it was user interface being very, very cumbersome. Um, but my, and, and also that their entire build chain and supply and package management chain is spread across a lot of different areas. Uh, but again, I haven't done a lot of work with the Red Hat build system in a few years. So that's, that's also why I probably shouldn't have said anything negative about uh, Koji. Setting it up is a nightmare, but I'm sure setting up OBS isn't a walk in the park either. Okay, so I, I will happily rescind the stage. <laughs>